This is a soundscape picture, and I think it might be faulty, and I'll show you that in a moment. But this is quite unusual because it does have LED lighting around of it, some of which actually works. But the whole concept of a sand picture, or soundscape, is that this disc here is filled with liquid. It's two layers of glass, and there are various densities of sand fine and coarse, different colours, and there's a bit of air trapped inside. And when you tip it upside down, the sand gets trapped at the top by the bubbles, and then it filters down like a sand timer um, under the influence of gravity and creates a random landscape each time. But watch what happens when I turn the lighting on. There's a band at the front, there's a band at the back. If I click the button, they both light up cold white, reasonable enough. If I click it again, one of them goes out, and the other one lights up warm white, and then I click it again, and uh, this one lights up with both the cold and warm, and that one's just the cold, which suggests I get the feeling that the warm white LEDs, if they're even in there, uh, are not working. But the next one, I'm going to have to warn you, strobing alert, because you can guess what sort of chip this is, it's about to start flashing. One, two, three, flash, and off again. That's hideous. It's just what happens when they use um, flasher, generic flasher chips. So let's um, take a closer look at this. I've noticed for a start, if you turn this on its side and you gently flex the frame out, don't know if this is standard procedure, but this must be how they get it in, you can actually take the glass picture frame out, revealing this. It also reveals a small hole on top, and uh, that hole is for adjusting the liquid and water inside, because normally these come with a syringe with a sharp pointy needle, a proper hypodermic needle. And uh, you can use it to inject a bit more water or a bit more air and or take water out or whatever. And uh, unfortunately, because this is Britain and it's the nanny state, uh, they have removed the syringe from the packaging. Lovely. So let's take a look at how this is done. I shall open it up. There might be just a wire off the circuit board or something. Ooh. It takes two AA batteries. I wonder if there's a boost circuit for the LEDs if it's doing that, because uh, the 3 volts is not really much to drive uh, standard LED tape. It's kind of close to the edge of uh, operation. You wouldn't get much lifespan out of the batteries, or it would just go quite dim quite quickly. So there appear to be six screws in the bottom. I say six screws, but I've not looked under the battery holder battery cover yet. There might be an extra screw under there. They sometimes tuck one away. I might be wrong. It might not be faulty. It might just be that the back one only has cold white. There doesn't look like an extra screw under there. Okay. Let's uh, focus at a more sensible level. There appear to be Three wires going to each side. <laughs> well, that may be the fault then, if that wire was supposed to be connected. I guess it was. Okay. Right. So, well, let's keep taking things apart. So, we have uh, a couple of screws. A little uh, retainer bracket, and then this just pops out. It has a little uh, stand down there. That's quite neat, actually. Oh, and it's connectors. That's handy. Let's pull the battery connector off. I'd guess these, they've got the same colour and pin out. I guess they're just in parallel. Well, that makes it lovely. Now, where's the one that's got the wire off? It's this side. Is this hard plastic? It's soft plastic. Oh, right. This looks like that LED neon stuff that they put into channels on LED tape. And there is the LED tape in there. I can see the two ends up here. And they've connected at the midpoint so there's not too much voltage drop. Oh, I see where the wire's off. Oh, that's going to be very, very fumblesome to get into. But after having said that, if there's enough slack in the wires... I can actually go on to the next one along. See how this, this LED tape... Well, let me grab a wee bit down here. I think I've got a bit in the vicinity. Yeah, stuff like this. Uh, because it's got a connection point 
For each LED position, you can just go one along. This is just single colour, though. Oh, and I have tapped in the middle in that one. I wonder what this was out of. It was a thing that I'd done, whatever it was. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to solder that wire back on, and we'll give it a quick flash and see if it works. One moment, please. Okay, it is soldered back on. Let's uh, focus down to a sensible height here. That's quite good. Uh, so, very hard to get in there because uh, there's a very narrow channel. The only other way I could really have done that was taking the LED tape out. But I don't know if this is put in then clipped together afterwards. I don't see any obvious way it's going to come apart without... Uh, I think it might be glued together. But it is together again. Hopefully this is going to actually work. Let's find out. So... Click. There's a code. There's the worm. That's what we're looking for. And then both together. Excellent. And then strobing. Uh-oh. Uh, now, while I was looking at this, I was thinking this stuff does look like that material that you put into the routed channel. And this is an alternative version. This is a, the common sort of LED neon type of thing. I shouldn't say LED neon because the true aficionados of neon will hate me saying that. But does this fit in or is it too big? Let's see if I can squish it in and see what happens when I power it up. It does kind of go in. And I think with a bit of effort, I could actually work that round. But I'll just leave that as it is at the moment. And we'll click it and we'll just see. Yeah, you could actually. A modest amount of light comes out through that. You do have the option in here to basically uh, customise this if you want and put in your own colour of LED tape. What size is it? It's about, well, it looks like the, looks a bit wider. If you if you're going for a single colour, the six millimetre probably would do it. Anyway, now, let's take a look at the circuit board, which I've just put over there with that. So what do we have here? Let's zoom in it. I shall reverse engineer this, in fact. We've got three 3.3 3 ohm resistors, and they look as though they're in parallel there to limit the current to... Well, that's the equivalent of one ohm resistor. It depends how they're done. The input port has a diode for polarity protection. The battery connection is also showing a diode here, maybe a shock diode. The battery voltage was already going to be quite low. Right, tell you what, I shall uh, reverse engineer this and we can take a look at the schematic. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. I did actually take a picture of the circuit board because it's actually quite a nice circuit board, really. The USB power supply comes in here and it's got a Schottky diode in series in the negative connection just for polarity protection, I presume. And it's got three 3.3 .3 ohm resistors in parallel, giving a total of 1.1 ohms. I thought the LED tape in the housing itself around the sandscape, I thought they had resistors, but they don't. So effectively, all 80 of each colour of LED are just basically in parallel and powered via these uh, current limiting resistors. This diode here, this is where the AA battery pack connects. And on this side of the circuit board, it's got the positive track going to this Schottky diode. But unfortunately, on the other side of the circuit board, it's got it going to the parallel track on the other side to this, which means that both sides of this diode are just connected together. It is completely pointless. There's an interesting thing. Here's the, uh, the little chip. It's marked BAT and then lowercase a and e. I didn't find anything for that. I think it's just basically a software code. There's a little capacitor across it, and the switch goes to one of the pins. But you can choose on the circuit board with a zero ohm link whether it's going to be tied to the negative or the positive. So when you click the button, it either goes either positive or negative. In this case, it goes positive when you click the button. And then the two outputs of this go in parallel to the LED tape, and there's a common positive going down to the LED tape too. And that is it. Let's take a look at the schematic. Which is more or less as I've just said. So there's an incoming, uh, I'll just mark that, USB. There's the incoming supply. There's the 1.1 ohm. There's the battery pack. Now, one of the reasons they might have put the diode there was to protect against reverse charging the batteries, but also they probably found that the batteries uh, are already such a low voltage that maybe it was an issue with the LEDs. Um, but anyway, at some point, the diode has been bypassed and it's left been left in the circuit board. 
There's the little decoupling capacitor for stability of the circuit. There's the optional link. The one is in for the button going up to the positive. And then the two sets of 80 LEDs, that's 40 on each side, 40 of each colour on each side, uh, just go to the chip and that's it. Now, it would be remiss of me not to uh, finish this video without showing you the thing in operation, but um, it's quite a slow one. So... Instead of that, I'm going to show you this little one instead because it's a lot faster. So I'll show you that right now. So that's quite a nice effect. I am about to put this strip back in now because it is fixed. So let's see how easily this goes in. It seems to go in relatively easily, but what is it going to be like when it gets up to the end? It's a lot easier than the neon stuff, but that's probably because the neon stuff was uh, for a different size. I can't remember what this one was for. It's sized for a specific uh, channel. You get them in different widths. And this one, uh, because it's a... Uh, I think it's going to have to squish in here because it seems a bit too long, but they probably did that deliberately just to give us a friction fit. Oh, not so easy, but it'll go in. I could make it light, you know, because I've got a couple of AA batteries in it. So let's go for the warm white. That's not too bad, is it? It's not super bright with the batteries, but it wouldn't be because uh, they are just that little bit uh, lower voltage. Right, let's try clamping this down here and drag it round in some way. Yeah, maybe I should cut this a bit shorter, but I don't want to, just in case it, it turns out that is the optimal length. How annoying this must be in the factory. I wonder if they've got special tools for putting in. But that is it. And now, am I going to be able to get the frame back in easily enough? Uh, you can just tilt this over to do the little uh, hypodermic needle thing to change the amount of air. As you saw, the last one was very, very fast, but this one is not fast. This one actually stalls a bit too often because the, there's too much air. Or I shook it up too much and it's got too fine a bubbles. I should move this into shot here. Oh, stretch that out. Let's see if it would just implode in my hand. There we have it. It is back together. So we've got the... Uh, dual colour, we've got the strobin, uh-oh, uh, cold, warm white, and this time we've got warm white in both, and then of course the double colour in both. So there we have it. It's an interesting visual effect. Uh, I quite like these sand art pictures, as I've said. They're, it makes me think someone must have done it accidentally. They just basically created uh, liquid inside and thought they could shake and get different shapes of the sand, maybe, and then the bubbles showed that effect, and then they they evolved into this sort of art. Very neat, very interesting stuff.